I've planned a little bit of a treat, a surprise for you guys this evening, uh, just to celebrate, you know, this premature success you've all had. So, really, I mean, this song is really meaningful to me. I didn't. I hope you have the same reaction. And you can press play. I actually think that the version that Michael Penn arranged for Marnie to sing is one of the great sonic accomplishments of 2012-13, but um, that scene was incredibly awkward. Everybody felt embarrassed, the extras, the crew. Allison has a beautiful voice, but that does not keep that from being the most misguided moment in the history of musical performance. She's still going. That was definitely a really funny scene to do because we didn't want to use up Allison's voice. It's kind of an intense vocal performance, so we did five takes, and then she lip sunk and bobbed her head around for the rest of the night, so all the extra looks of mortification were not fake because it's just as upsetting to watch someone lip sync and bob their head around as it is to watch them sing a weird slowed down, sexed up song. My favorite kind of humor is somebody who just has no sense of how they appear to the world, like their idea of who they are and people's perception of them. There's just this like great divide there, and I think Marnie's a great example of that. She's really like the Michael Scott of our TV program. She's really mortifying, but she's so pretty, so it's confusing. Dude, you've got to get your shit together. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't good. What are you doing here? My girlfriend's friend got engaged. Your girlfriend, wow. I always want to see Adam date someone else because I want to know how much of the romantic Adam is him and how much of it is what Hannah brings out in him. Artificial sweeteners will rot in your insides. I mean, no, but that other stuff's gonna make me fat. I'd rather you be fat and healthy. It was always exciting for me, the idea of him dating a girl who was a little more normal. I really liked her as a character and I kind of rooted for her getting what she wanted. And so that was sort of a funny position to both be playing the character who is not excited that her ex-boyfriend is dating someone new, but also to be writing this character, Natalia, who I think is such a cool girl, and think like, I want you to be just as happy as you ever want to be. Is this he? This is him. Oh, it is so good to meet you, Adam. <laughs> you as well. Oh, thank you. I think in his relationship with Natalia, he's on guard, he doesn't let his freak flag fly in the same way, and in a way that's healthy, like he's behaving like a human man. He's a real live boy. But in another way, it's a little doomed to fail because he's unable to really be who he is in a clear way. Get on all fours. And what? Get on all fours. Adam really reverts back to this, this darker kind of sex, which I think is almost like an armor for him. I think that that kind of role play and that kind of acting like, you know, who's the man is a way for him to protect himself and to be less emotional and to be less vulnerable. And that's what happens between him and Natalia. And it's a, it was a very hard scene to direct because, you know, we've come to really care about Adam and now we see him committing behaviors that are not gentlemanly, are very dark. And I think that both the actors were really brave because they went in without judgments and they just kind of experienced the scene together and sort of left up to the audience to decide what's happened. I like, really didn't like that. This is it? Are you done with me? <laughs>